Hello and welcome to Susie B Living's Gardening by the Moon series. So it is Sunday the 23rd of June. It is a beautiful evening here in Lincolnshire and I am outside. I'm just about to do my watering and I'm going to give you your next three days, which is the 24th, 25th and 26th of June of what I am sowing, transplanting, <clears throat> weeding, my maintenance and also what I'm feeding and my kind of watering system as well. And I'm starting down here on my knees because for the next two days, so we're talking Monday the 24th of June and Tuesday the 25th of June, it will be a roots day on both of those days. And underneath this mesh here, I have got a trough of carrots. So it is a great time to sow some carrots and you will get these carrots at the end of autumn. Okay, now we've got to talk about variety. So you want these carrots to get off quite fast. If you're thinking about sowing autumn winter varieties, then think where you are going to actually sow them. I probably wouldn't be sowing them in the garden yet. Um, and in, at the moment because it's just a little late for them. You could try and those varieties I would do are Eskimo which is an F1 and Touchon which is an F1 as well. I would instead and I am going to, tomorrow I am going to sow a trough, you can do it in a pot, you can do it in a big container as well, of carrots and I am going to sow my, one of my favorite summer variety carrots, which is called Sugar Snacks. Sugar and then S-N-A-X. Again, it's an F1. And I, uh, when I harvest these carrots that are in here, and these are my, <laughs> you're not gonna believe this, but these are my actually my carrots that I overwintered. I'm still harvesting these carrots. They're not huge, but you can see they're a decent carrot. And actually I've got some bigger ones in here as well. This one has forked, I can see. But I'm harvesting these carrots now. I'm gonna take them in and then in this trough, oh, that's a better one, that's a better looking one. There. In this trough, I will replenish some of the compost, not all of it. I'll keep some of the compost in there and I am going to sow sugar snacks carrots. I will also do a couple more troughs as well. So um, that is my sowing of roots. That's the only thing that I am going to sow of roots. Actually I do lie because tonight for dinner we had um, my last lot of first early potatoes that I had in a potato bag which is just here to the right of me. And I found that I have a few potatoes left inside that um, I left on a windowsill and they chittered um, and they look actually quite good. So I am going to throw a few of those potatoes, not literally throw, but put a few of those potatoes into my potato bag and then I'll have a nice little crop um, later on in the year towards um, you know, December probably. Actually, they probably won't take that long, maybe even earlier, November, that would be nice. So that is my sewing for Roots Day. Right, let's talk about transplanting. So now I am at my little seedling area here. And most of these seedlings I did in my May sew along on Instagram. So they're doing very, very well. And I just want to show you what I've got here that is nearly ready to transplant out. So I have some kohlrabi, which are looking good. Just need to thin these out a little bit actually. And then when I can see the roots coming through the bottom, I will plant those out. So probably not this roots day. I've got some uh, leeks here. The leeks are only small. Actually, I've got two lots of leeks. These leeks here are my summer leeks that um, 
I, I never plant it out. And now I'm thinking that I probably won't actually plant them out. If I do, I'm going to plant them out here in the kitchen garden because they're just a bit small and I'm going to have to water them a lot. But these other leeks here, so these ones are poor, they're called poor bella. Now poor bella is a really good summer leek and it's a really good winter leek as well. So if you do want to do any leeks, think just you know, put aside in the back of your mind the variety Poor Bella. Um, I'm not going to sow any leeks now. I just find that it's a little bit late now if you're going, if you want to sow them for the winter. But that's if you want a big leek. If you just want small, nice, thin leeks, then by all means, sow some leeks. And I always do them in modules here. This is usually the module size that I use, which are the container-wise 40s. And um, so I, again, I've got poor Bella down this end, they're doing well, and then up this end I've got the Musselbra. And Musselbra is a really good variety for the UK. Let me not squash that. Um, what other... Here we go. I have some, and these, these have been really funny. I've got a feeling I have a rogue snail somewhere actually, because these are my Florence fennel. And see how many I've lost? They all germinated and I've lost quite a few. So I think I've got um, a snail visiting this staging, but these are just about ready to go out as well. So that's more transplanting there. My Swede, which I wasn't gonna do this year, but I did for the sew along. Again, I think, <laughs> where's this snail? Oh, I have to go on the lookout for it. That's rubbish because they all germinated. They're not ready to go out yet. And uh, under here is mainly bedding, yes. So that's my, that's what I'm transplanting at the moment. Oh, the other thing that I have is some kohlrabi, but they're over there. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the next thing. So the next thing I suggest you do is harvest your garlic. So we're talking about harvesting now. My garlic got rust and I am just going to fish out the best looking bulbs here which is quite difficult because they're very, very small. But as you can see, I have a few there that are okay. They've actually um, formed cloves, so that's good. Uh, the bed, but most of them, and this was my own saved garlic, looks like this. So that's kind of like a complete disaster. However, let me show you something that wasn't a disaster. I hope you can see okay so this is a kind of little area that we've got underneath our house and something just fall there no all right let me show you you can see it hanging on here look at that with a little bulb bill there can you guess what it is elephant garlic. So the elephant garlic was fantastic this year. This is the best year that I have had of, with elephant garlic because it didn't get rust. So <laughs> guess what I'm going to grow more of next year? Good old elephant garlic. So yes, if you have got garlic in the ground and you planted it in October, then it will be ready now because from June, the beginning of June, they start, the bulbs start swelling and they form cloves. If you didn't plant until November, then you might be able to get away with harvesting your garlic um, early in July. You just may not have as big a bulb as, well, definitely not as this elephant garlic. Um, so it's a good idea to harvest your garlic. Any other weeding and maintenance um, is if you've got any main crop onions in, keep an eye on those. I've had allium leaf miner as well this year, which has been shocking and terrible. Um, shallots, if you've got shallots, they should be coming out of the ground now as well. Um, and anything else, keep an eye on things like fennel. If you've got Florence fennel in the ground, it might be going to seed because it usually does at this time of year. Uh, kohlrabi, keep water up to the kohlrabi. If you've got celeriac in the ground as well, keep watering the celeriac as well. 
because it likes lots and lots of water and just keep an eye on things. If things start to get a little bit yellow, they either have got too much water or not enough water. That's the usual thing with alliums. And as for potatoes, if you've got crops in the ground of potatoes, just keep an eye on them. They should be um, flowering now. If you've got second earlies in, they'll be flowering. The main crop may not be flowering yet. And just keep, again, keep an eye on them. If you've got any... Um, tubers that are pushing up into the ground you might have to mound them up with a little bit of soil or a bit of compost and then everything should be fine and then wednesday the 26th of june is a flowers day again on the moon phase calendar so if you haven't sown any purple sprouting broccoli then this is a perfect time to do it try not to leave it too long because you do want it to be in the ground for a good long season. The other thing is you can also be sowing some um, cauliflowers or some calabres, you know, the green headed broccoli as well. That's always great to sow now. And um, for transplanting, I'm not sowing anything because I'm done, but I have some um, calabres, little um, seedlings that I want to transplant out. Um, <clears throat> today on the allotment we pulled out all of my purple cauliflowers. The ones outside hadn't done very well actually. They just, they sat there for quite a long time and then when the heat came they just blew and blowing of, of a cauliflower means that they, the curds just open up. We were able to salvage one to bring home. I've still got a pretty good one in the greenhouse on the allotment and then that's me done for my cauliflowers and calabres until my next succession. So um, that uh, they are going to go into nine centimeter pots and then they will go out later on. So uh, weeding and maintenance, I don't have anything at the moment but I do have some very beautiful bedding that I have to get in. <laughs> so that's a really good day on flowers day to do bedding. I've even got sweet peas here to go in um, but I am just getting through my bedding slowly, slowly, slowly and my flowers slowly, slowly. So on flowers days, it's always great to get, get in nice and close to your flowers. Have a look if they've got any pests on them, if there's any diseases happening on them as well. It's a good time to do the weeding around them. It's just a lovely, lovely day, flowers days. And then um, if you want to feed anything, I'm going to be giving my, all my bedding that I've already got out. They're all going to get a feed and I only use, I use a kind of multi, multi-purpose feed. Uh, so I use um, miracle Grow All-Purpose. I also um, use a product by Moonshine Global and that helps um, uh, with, mm, let me just think how I'm going to explain this. When you use a feed, it helps the feed actually attach to the roots of the plants. So it's actually a very, very good um, product. I will put a link at the bottom of this post so you can have a look at it. And I'm pretty sure, I'll, I'll, I'll check, but I think I have a discount code for them. So um, I will show you that as well. I'll just, I've got some Moonshine Global here actually that I want to show you. This product is called Home Garden and this is the product that I'm talking about. So it works on... Um, helping any feed that you've got and also if you're going to feed something that's actually in soil it helps that it helps the nutrients from the soil bind to the roots of the plants it's very very good it's a very clever product and there's not much in it there's molasses and kelp which is a usual kind of seaweed feed that you always get a bit of molasses in there and um, that's it so and there's a, just a little bit of oil seed extracts as well, which helps bind. Um, and you only use the tiniest amount. You use one mil per litre. It's a great product. Like I said, I, if I've got my code, I'll put it down below. And I'll also put the link in of Moonshine Global. And that is it until Wednesday evening. So I hope that you are able to enjoy your garden. I hope that the summer has come for you. I hope that you're not frizzling to death in the heat. Uh, we're very happy because the summer has actually started here in Lincolnshire and um, 
had a great day at the allotment today so it's all good and thanks again for watching me and thanks for subscribing and if you're not subscribing and you do want to know what I'm doing every single day of the year <coughs> excuse me with my sewing and my transplanting then just hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up that'd be great any issues that you've got with your gardening any, gardening, any questions as well, please drop me a line below and just, I will answer, no problem. Okay, I'll see you on Wednesday night. Bye.